In 2022, I threw hiked the Pacific Crest Trail, and I've done a lot of other hikes. But over the years, I've been given all sorts of tips and advice that has really helped me along the way. So I want to give back and help people be successful on the PCT in years to come. So I came up with 100 quick tips to help you hike the PCT. I also did one of these for how to lighten your backpack, so you should check that video out as well. But I'm going to break this down into pre-trail, general advice, uh, gear advice, the different sections of the trail, and then post-trail. So let's get right into this. The first topic here will be pre-trail. The things you want to do before you've even left. Get familiar with the first few towns and how far away they are from one another. This will tell you how much food to carry in the beginning. Save money. My hike cost $6,000, and on average, people spend $9,000. Research hikers who started when you are starting to get a feel for conditions you may face. I started May 10th, for instance. Walk more in daily life and go hiking more frequently to get in shape and get familiar with your shoes. Train with your full pack to know how it feels then use that as motivation to lighten it. If you want to go slow, start early. If you want to go fast, start late. This strategy is helpful to avoid wildfire season. You don't need to send any boxes. Maybe Kennedy Meadows, anything else though, you can easily figure out from the trail. Follow other hikers hiking the same year you are to get a small look at conditions ahead and to feel more a part of the community as a whole. Download the Far Out app. It will be your primary navigational source with up-to-date info on what is ahead. This is previously known as Gut Hook. And for you international people out there, you're gonna want a B2 visa, which will allow you to stay in the US for six months. So a huge thing on everyone's mind whenever starting a long through hike like this is gear. So let's go over some gear advice. Dial in gear before you go by taking a lot of short overnight trips near home. Ideally, for the PCT, you will want a base pack weight under 15 pounds, or 6.8 kilograms. Remember, this is a very long walking trip up and down mountains. A trekking pole is necessary in snow for stability and trekking poles in general are very good at injury prevention as they alleviate pressure on your joints, your muscles, your bones, just about everything. Trekking poles are great. Replace your shoes every 500 to 600 miles to keep your feet happy. Replace socks just as often. Most people will want a 20 degree Fahrenheit or negative six degrees Celsius quilt for the duration of the hike. Most people will want a tent as often there aren't enough trees for hammocks and tarps aren't going to shield you from the bugs. So a tent is usually the best option here. When it comes to your feet and your shoes, consider wearing gaiters. They wrap around the outside of your shoe and they will prevent little dust and dirt and rocks from getting in your shoe and it will help prevent blisters. I highly recommend gaiters on the PCT. Bring a ground sheet for cowboy camping. It will save a lot of time and effort every single night, and trust me, you will get used to it. And of course, carry a trowel and use it. Carry a personal locator beacon. You may not use it, but it could literally save your life and about one out of every three through hikers I saw on the PCT had one of these things. It is just a great safety item. All right, so that's some tips for gear, but don't forget to check out my 100 tips for a more ultralight backpack. I thought that was a great video, and that's the one that inspired this one. So now we'll just get into some general advice on hiking the PCT. My first tip, of course, is Above all else, have fun. Don't be too rigid with your plans. 
be flexible and willing to change as flexibility could save your hike. Talk to everyone you meet. There's always something new to learn. Take pictures of people and more of the random day-to-day -day sightings beyond just landscapes. You will thank yourself later. You can plan as much as you want, but in the end, the only thing that's going to matter is actually getting out there and you will figure it out along the way. The hardest part of the PCT is in its length, much more so than any other challenge that you will face out there. So try not to burn out too early by going too fast and try not to spend all of your money in the first month. Remember that you are in this for the long haul. So do what is going to be sustainable for the long haul and is going to make the overall distance comfortable. More money saved and a slow but consistent pace is best. Use hiker boxes for sunscreen and Ziplocs instead of buying new in every town. You never know what you're going to find in a hiker box and sometimes it's good, sometimes there's just about nothing. I don't think you can always rely on them, but it's always worth looking. Fall in love with nature. Identify birds, plants, and flowers. Nature is there to support you, even when times are hard. Remember that no matter the situation, that you are in a beautiful place and on this cool adventure that you chose to be on. Create a list for all your trail thoughts, as you will forget these things. Keep your hiking easy. Your easy will soon be fast. Stretching your legs nightly will help prevent injury and will make you feel a lot better day after day after day of hiking. Washing your feet often will help prevent blisters as there's less friction inside of your shoes. Now please, leave no trace. Look up the seven principles and follow them so that many thousands of other hikers for years to come can enjoy this trail as well. Be nice to trail angels and donate money to them. They are the unsung heroes of the PCT. Don't be afraid to start alone. New friends to be made are everywhere. Carry some cash. Not everywhere accepts card. If you're not enjoying it, change it up. Ask yourself what would make it more fun. On average, this hike takes people five months to complete. I would budget and plan for that regardless of how fast you think you are. Lower your expectations. Sometimes this experience sucks, but you will be stronger for it, and usually it doesn't. Take time off as soon as you feel potential injuries coming on. They will heal if caught early. Start your day slow and let your body warm up. Look after your feet and deal with hot spots before they become blisters, as blisters can turn into much worse injuries if you are trying to baby one foot and overcompensating. Don't let anyone shame your hike. So long as you are having fun, then you're doing great. All right, so now we'll get into some specific uh, topics regarding the different sections along the PCT. We'll start that out with the desert. The first tip here is that the desert is not much of a desert at all. Oftentimes it is quite cold high up in the mountains. When you start the PCT, take it slow. There's nothing wrong with 10 miles a day and your body will thank you later. Get miles in mornings or evenings when it is cool out and take long breaks midday. Use a sun umbrella or large hat to avoid getting burnt. Take more zeros early on to let your body grow and ease in. Don't chase hikers faster than you. This is a very quick way to get hurt. Get a free PCT pin in Wrightwood. Electrolytes and salts are essential in this kind of environment. Start with six liters of water or more through the desert. You can always ditch some of the bottles later on. All right, so that's advice for the desert and the very beginning of your hike. Well, the thing everyone looks forward to is the Sierra. They look forward to it, but I think a lot of people look forward to it with fear. So I hope these tips help. 
ease into the elevation. Don't go too fast, and if headaches persist, go to town. Elevation sickness will get better as you acclimate. Get a bug head net and carry it to the end from here. Both Lone Pine and Bishop are cool towns. I recommend that you go to at least one of them. Don't camp near water. It will be colder, more animals may bother you because they like that water too, and more bugs will be there as well. Climb Mount Whitney, the highest point in the southern U.S. This was one of my favorite parts from my PCT hike. Advil and Tylenol can help for elevation sickness, but truly the best thing is getting lower in elevation. Wait for morning when water levels are lowest and do river crossings in a group. The BV500 Bear Can is the best option, not the 450. Most hikers do one pass a day and then camp. Trying to do more than that could be very difficult. You might find yourself in bad situations in the effort. If you can, take a side trip to Yosemite Valley. You never know when you're going to be in this area again. Micro spikes are always smart for the Sierra. And especially if you're not so sure what the conditions are going to be like, you should definitely carry them. All right, congrats, you completed the Sierra. Right now you're probably in South Lake Tahoe playing mini golf along the lake. Well, let's keep it going and head off into Northern California. Be mindful of Widowmaker trees at camp as NorCal has a lot of burnt areas and a lot of those trees are ready to fall. Don't let the blues get you down. NorCal is awesome and just gets better and better as you continue north. The climbs in NorCal aren't as bad as they look, so I recommend to just keep on climbing at a slow pace. NorCal will be hot again. Use the same tactics that worked for you in the desert. Towns are frequent. Carry as little food as you want or skip every other town like I did if you want a more wilderness experience. Now probably the biggest tip that I could offer in this entire video is that late summer and early fall is the beginnings of fire season. Please beware of your timing. Generally, my idea was that I wanted to be out in NorCal by the time any of those fires started. So I think just knowing that is going to be a big, big help to many, as fires are a huge concern year after year. All right, you've now hiked 1,700 miles and we're moving on into Oregon. A mosquito head net and DEET are now your best friend. Look out for old blazes. You'll start seeing them here, and it's cool to see the history of this trail in person. Send a resupply box to Crater Lake. You can easily do this from trail. And don't forget, take the Crater Lake Rim Trail alternate. You will not regret it. Be careful of water in Oregon. Distances vary and many get caught in a dry stretch without anything. Volcanic rock through this state will hurt your feet. Consider new shoes for Oregon. Climb Mount Thielson. I didn't, but wish I had. Ashland, Sisters, or Bend are great towns to consider a zero in. And regardless of zero, you should float the river in Bend and congratulate yourself on mile 2000. When you get to Mount Hood, enjoy the Timberline Lodge Buffet. I think the lunch is even better than the breakfast, though there are many people that will fight me on that. Go to PCT Days in Cascade Locks, Oregon in August. It is a zoo, but it is the most incredible reunion of all the long trails. As you're coming up on Washington and the Bridge of the Gods, Take the Eagle Creek alternate and see Tunnel Falls. This is another time you will not regret skipping a section of the PCT for something else. It also marks the beginning of Washington. So what advice do I have for the state of Washington? You're going to want to take this state slower. It's very hard, but it's also very, very beautiful. Eat lots of berries. The majority of them should be in bloom by the time that you get there. If you can, catch sunrise on the Goat Rocks Wilderness Ridge Line. 
Spend a day in Stahican and go to the bakery and jump in the lake. You're also going to want to send a resupply box to Stahican. In the final 200 miles, there is no cell service. I recommend trying to enjoy that. Now, if you're pushing the seasons, remember that in mid-September, it can start snowing up in Washington and the North Cascades. Just like fire season, beware of your timing. So congratulations, you've completed the PCT. Now you must walk 30 miles back south from the border, unless you're crossing into Canada, which some do. But what about post-trail? What about once you're done? For my first tip for after the thru-hike has completed, choose vegetables. Eat more real foods and your body will thank you. I know it is hard to give up those sugars. Start new hobbies or bring back old ones. Just keep yourself occupied with new and fun things. And don't forget to keep in touch with trail friends. Some of these people will be lifelong friends and some of the best friends you will ever have. Start running, cycling, and being active again sooner rather than later to maintain that fitness level and keep endorphins flowing. As when you are hiking the PCT all day every day, you just had this flood of endorphins that is now gone. Fill out the Halfway Anywhere survey so that other hikers can learn from you and your class. And register your hike with the PCTA and you will get a special certificate for doing so. Now remember that notepad you started at the beginning of the trail and you've been filling out this entire time? Don't forget to now go through all of it and look up some of these things you've been dreaming about and thinking about while you were out there. And of course, start dreaming about the next trip. Whether that's a road trip, an international trip, your next through hike, whatever it may be. And my final tip, tip number 100, is actually going to come from you. I want to know what your best tip for through hiking the PCT is, as I know many, many of the people that watch these videos have hiked this trail before. So I'm sure there's a lot of great advice that you're going to find down in the comments below. So thank you for that. Now those are my 100 tips for hiking the PCT. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you did, give me a little thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel. I've got more through hikes coming up and I hope you stick around with me for them.